silk ribbon. For my own haberdasher, Mr. Albert Thomas, and I can see you at the back there, Albert. She was caught in the act, taking this fine yellow ribbon and secreting it into her pocket. And it's my unpleasant duty on this fine day to oversee her punishment. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, gather round to see this wretch get punished for her crimes. Hey, come on with her! Not my duty to judge your case, uh, wretch. That has already been done. journey through some of the past events that really happened here in this town and you'll come face to face with the characters that actually lived in Bishop's Castle. We wanted to bring this town's history to life and to highlight the need to preserve our local heritage, namely the town hall, and we thought the best way to do that is through drama. So we'll be taking you on a prominent performance, whereas the audience you'll literally be taken from scene to scene. Our next scene takes place in the nail house of Bishop's Castle perhaps even the boar's head. We're he um, here you'll see much <coughs> plotting afoot. In the 1700s, Bishop Tassel was known as a rotten borough, a place where politi political corruption was rife. The master of the area, Lord Clive, had been ridden ballot using strong-arm tactics, but it seemed, but the locals, it seems, have had enough. So please follow us now into the market hall for our next scene. Now then, gentlemen, I've gathered you here today to discuss the horrible situation we find ourselves in. Wench, ale! Once again, Clive stands unopposed in the election. Yes, indeed, sir. I was putting a gentleman in question in the new photo only today when he made it very clear that this he I must vote for I'll never be privileged with a single item of dress for him again. <laughs> this behaviour must not go unchallenged. There's no such dictatorship in Ludlow or Leinster, so why do we have to deal with it here? But Sky Brownlow, with respect, sir, if a major withdraws his custom, the local gentry will be followed in will follow in suit. And I'll be able to tailor that any tailoring. I can't live on families alone. That is why we are together. For together is the only way we can overturn this tyranny. Ale wench, bring it now! But might I have a say? Exactly, sir. Speak up. As much as I agree with you, sir, I am a young man starting out in my father's business. And like Mr. Weston here, that business relies on the patronage of the world to do. What chance I have in life, I bite the right hand that feeds me. 
Boy, are you to be downtrodden all your life? What say you? Are you with me? I'm sure I can rely on your support. I find your opposition to this corrupt election most inspiriting, sir. And of course, I must agree entirely with the sentiment. However, I can also appreciate the reluctance of these two good gentlemen. This is a problem that needs careful handling. Well, good sirs, sitting here I cannot but overhear your conversations. Might I be so bold to put forward the opinion of a working man? Because I think that we should storm his house and burn him out. Then we can string him up from the gallows and there's an end to it. Too long he's made our lives miserable. He turned my poor neighbour out of his farm last month, leaving a good man destitute and begging on the streets. Yes, indeed, my good man. The tyrant wreaks havoc in all the sectors of our society. Come, gentlemen, let us hatch a plot. It is with a heavy heart that I meet you here tonight, Mrs. Johnson. Why so, my dear? Are you quite well? Oh, my health is fine, my dear. But as you hear, my dear husband is on another of his campaigns. I fear so that one day he will be overheard and the comfortable lives will be changed forever. My dear, you should be proud of your husband. He's a fine fellow and a courageous man to speak the which we all think. Oh, my dear, of course I agree with you. But why does it have to be my dear husband? Oh, so, when so many others feel the same. Well, somebody has to lead the overthrow of the tyrant. And well, of course, someone, the right person, has to be prepared to lead the new regime. So, gentlemen, we are all agreed that we must grasp the nettle and deal with this situation as soon as possible. More yes, yes, yes of course, definitely. And when do we are rid of the tyrant? Who then will be prepared to stand for this town in Parliament? Oh. Oh, no. <coughs> Sir, but I can think of no one better than yourself. Oh yes, yes, yes of course. course. Yeah. Fair minded love, it has to be you, sir. Yes, of course. Gentlemen, gentlemen, how kind you are. You flatter me with your trust. Now, let's away to further our plans. Ladies, come. We have much work to do tonight. So it seems a revolt seems set to happen here in Bishop's Castle. This practice of vote bridging was commonplace in remote and rural areas like Bishop's Castle that were far away from the law and order of major cities such as London. Where a judge is presiding over a terrible case of attempted murder and death by a local Bishop's Castle man. Again, all you see and hear actually happened right here in the, the town. You may hear some references to places that still remain to this day. You will all become a part of the crowd in an 18th century courtroom, a very different place from today's more civilised courts. It was not uncommon for the public gallery to react what they saw and heard. So if you want to give a quick boo and hiss, then please see it. So now, please follow us to the top floor to hopefully see a very rigid man brought to justice. Order in the court. For the accused, step into the dock, please. <laughs> Mr. Richards, can you tell the court how you came by your injury? Yes, Your Honor. I was finding the ambulance, looking at the pipe. I was enjoying the fresh air outside the ear house. But suddenly, this strange kid, the
my name is Mr. Arnold Fridwell, Your Honour. Come along, man. Tell us your occupation. Then explain the events of the afternoon, 6th of February, 1829. Well, yes, Your Honour. I'm a farmer, me, mainly our Lord, but I do wear a few sheep over on the common. On the afternoon that fateful day, I was taking a walk on the common to check on my flock and my old dog bears. I changed my shotgun in case he's washed a rabbit for myself. I'm partial to match up this too. That is amazing. Well, Dave, you would kindly send to your account. Uh, yes, Your Honour, finally, Your Honour. Well, I, I was walking along, minding my own business, when I spotted a shabby looking gentleman behind you on the roof tree. Yeah. I called Bess to hear him and, and made my way over. As I approached, he dodged around behind the tree, and he straight away he was up to no good. I followed him around with my gun, Ben and Hacker was around, but she didn't like him either. So I, so I pointed my gun to him and shouted, Oh, stranger, explain what you're doing here. When he turned to face, whoever turned his face, more than more different. Gilbert, Bill, Pando's around town. So I apprehended him there and there, and marched straight to the jail. Rebecca's house, of course. Oh, really? Did you accuse the sister, Rex? Yes, I did! Of course I did! I've been on the run since December last. I get a parish constantly, a merry dance. They didn't know if they were coming or going. And then this smelly old father stumbles upon me in a room of moon of spite and arrests me. Be quiet, Miss Devons, or should I say, quiet, small man. That is the alias you use. We all know about your constant flouting of the law, Miss Evans, not to mention the bill posters that you had reprogrammed and posted all around. The law will always prevail, and we were here today to put an end to your shenanigans once and for all. Thank you, Mr. to their home. 
And when I noticed that my very best canteen of silver cutlery had been stolen, it's been in my family for three generations. I can see how very distressing this is for you. Console yourself and step down. Call the next witness. Call the next witness. Call the next witness. Call the next witness. Madam, you are the sister of the accused. What do you have to say in his defence? He's a good man, Your Honour. He spent most of his life as a hard-working miller. Looking after me ever since the parents died when I was only three years old. When we fell on the hard side, John, John was very worried about providing food and shelter for us both. I don't believe any of these accusations. My John is a loving brother and a gentleman. Where will I go? You can't take him away from me. There isn't another person on earth to care for me. Please, I beg you! Madam, control yourself. Let go at once. Stand down. Stand down, I say. <sighs> Sarah, I didn't do it. You believe me, don't you? Calm down, dear girl. <laughs> Call the expert witness, Mr. Wollaston, a surgeon of upstanding reputation. Yeah, I'm just saying, really, really nicely, local children, plucking up courage and performing to people are really close to, and people they know, and I think that's a bit, I'm, I'm daunted just talking to you, so for them it must be quite scary. I thought it was excellent, very good, I mean the children were very professional and um, it, was, it was very well performed, yes. It's an amazing place and it's, it's lovely to see something which has so much age and um, yeah, it was nice to see the the performance in there. I, think. Um, yeah, I was very impressed. Thank you. Just um, watch the performances and it was uh, really good. And I think it's really important that this building um, gets restored like it's, it should be because um, it's part of the historical heritage of the town and we, we need it still. So it's really nice to have it here and uh, and I really enjoyed the show that the kids just did for us. It's brilliant.